So what's happened is my brother and I, for starters, we've we've kept high score spreadsheets for uh, a number of games, starting with Super Hexagon. We had competing high scores for our times on Super Hexagon, and then um, Mini Metro, which my mother and um, a friend of mine um, who moved away both got in on, and so we ended up having four people being tracked um, and comparing their high scores, all our high scores for each um, level of Mini Metro, and so that was fun. Um, and this instance, uh, I got my brother and myself in on it, Keith and Ashara, my roommates, and Zach, who's a friend who also enjoys Tetris. So we now have this, uh, a, a Google spreadsheet that any of us can mess with and get in our, get our scores on the, our personal leaderboard. So what I'm trying, wanting to talk about is how it works in case you want to make something similar for yourself. Um, I want to go through these sort of in a chronological order. Here is the first high score spreadsheet I made for just my brother and myself for Super Hexagon, which is a time-based game. You're trying to get your time as low as, or trying to get your time as high as possible to live the longest um, when there's all these obstacles coming at you from all directions. Um, so this one was very easy to organize because there are only six stages. Um, I noted their difficulties only because I think they're cute. Um, this column is totally unnecessary. Um, so how I have this set up, uh, in case you don't know about these bars, those just allow scrolling in, to be independent of the header rows. Um, so you click and drag this from, it's originally over here, click and drag it over here, and it denotes what the header rows are, so that when you scroll down, it doesn't, the headers stay. <laughs> it's just a visual thing. Um, okay, so for each level, I copy over the best time from the record breaks sheet for each player. So the record break sheet looks like this. So there's nice columns, different columns for each kind of game, for each kind of record. And then um, each one is date stamped, time stamped, so that way we can go back and be like, oh yeah, back, back in 2015, <laughs> um, we broke that one record, and so on and so forth. Um, and so he, and here's my brother's record breaks sheet. And so from each of these columns, it picks out the best time and puts those in here. So it's max of that, which these are very easy to grab. I typically do this. Um, so it's the max of, um, I would go over here be like, oh, it's this one. And I just grab the first column, the, the, the first bit first, and then just turn this into a thousand by hand, just to make it, force it to be huge. <laughs> um, and so that's how I entered in each of those. Um, and then this lead was something I, a feature I added later, um, as well as the coloration. So coloration, I believe I added first. So I'll talk about it next. There, if you find conditional formatting, um, you can have a custom formula like this. So it's right now applied to the range C2 to C7. This is my first implementation of this. It gets better. Don't worry. Um, so for this range, it um, colors it green if it is greater than um, the one to the right of it. And the way you do these custom formulas is you code it 
from the perspective of the first cell in the range. By first, I mean top left, which is this way for you. Um, so C2 is the first cell in the range. It's also the first one in the definition of the range. And from its perspective, I want it to be colored green if it's greater than the one to its right, which would be D2. And if I wanted to be it to always be D or always be 2, even as it moves in the range, I can use dollar signs here to make that happen. But in this case, I want it to always be um, relative the one to the right of C2, or the one to the right of the current cell. So I use D2 as a relative descriptor. Um, and so this is all clean and simple. Over here, I have the same thing, additional formatting. I just made a separate rule that colors Eric's green if Eric's are better than mine. And this is an old from 2015 spreadsheet. That's why the name is Joe instead of Emma Joe. That's why over here in Tetris, it'll be Emma Joe. We'll get there. But anyway, <coughs> then the lead is the max of, yeah, the max of the two scores divided by the min, which these are formatted as durations. So it actually is doing that math for me of converting those into sort of number numbers rather than time numbers, and then computes the lead uh, by subtracting one. So that's normally this would be like 120% because Eric's time is 100, well, my time is 120% of Eric's time, which means it's 20% more. So I subtract one and then have it formatted as a percent. And done. That's that's that spreadsheet. So then uh, whenever I did the mini metro one, <coughs> the main improvement was that I have more people to deal with. The lead still, oh, I, I don't know why that's that. <coughs> oh, I do know why that's that, but I did it a better way and I'm not going to tell you about it because it's not worth the time. I'll tell you that it's not worth the time. How about that? If you, if you see a solution that involves indexing the sort of the transpose, know that there's a better way. Oh no. Yeah. Okay, so here, what I did, ooh, I can't believe I did this on this one. Um, so first of all, I got tired of, ma because there are so many stages, I didn't want to have to manually refer <laughs> to each of the, um, <coughs> each of these spreadsheets. So what I did was I had it grab here. It grabs the name, and Debbie's the name of my mom. It grabs the name of the the header cell and uses that as part of the sheet name and then uses that to grab an indirect reference, which means that it's referring to a cell, but part of the name of the cell reference is actually being constructed on the fly. Um, which, frankly, I could do that now, and I'm probably going to add that into the Tetris high scores. I forgot I could do that. <laughs> and then here it's grabbing the max of those. <coughs> um. Oh, and that was actually just so that I could add new people. Uh, it seems that I had to manually hard code in the stages the way I currently have it. But I have a fix for that. Um, there's a way to get around that too. Don't worry. Um, you'll see some of what I've done in a bit. But regardless, so that means I could add a new column and a new record breaking sheet very easily. And you can see how this is directly inspired by the super hexagon record breaks. Like these are basically the same format. Uh, 
Um, so all that aside, back to top times. So that's how these work. The lead works the same way, <coughs> except it needs to compare the max to the second to most. And this is a very painful way of doing that, of grabbing the second to most. Um, and yeah. And then as for the conditional formatting, I improved on that. I just check if the cell is, if the first cell is equal to the max of its current row. I had to put dollar signs on the B and the E because the vertical or the horizontal bounds on the range of what you're checking don't change as you're moving from the cells left to right. So those are fixed, but the row needs to be relative to the current cell. Uh, so that's why the, the B gets a dollar sign, but the 2 does not. Um, and so that colors the l leading person green, and then this is their lead on the second to most person. My improvement on all of that is now this. Um, so this shows um, rank, which is a new feature. What's happening is over here, I think it's only two rows, but reset. <coughs> yeah, it's only two rows. So there's two hidden or columns, um, which work the same as before. So for each sheet over here, I have a name. And then this pulls from that name what the current record break is. And I can improve that. I'll, uh, I'll improve that later. Uh, but it's right here. <sighs> Boom! Okay. <coughs> so, <coughs> we have these scores that are grabbed from the record breaks sheet, which I'll show Eric's. Um, so, each record, this one has a lot more data that we actually care about, um, but these are what it's grabbing for the ranking. Um, so on each one, we go ahead and, because we're curious about it, we want to note like how efficiently we're using lines and things like that. And so we note the lines that were cleared, the starting level and the ending level. Um, and as well as the date time. But all of this is essentially metadata. It's not, it's not, this is the record. And then over here, it pulls the max of those for each player. And then this sorts these, this region from D2 to E6. It sorts that range um, by column two of what it is, and it is descending, so that is false, rather than ascending would be true, because I want the highest one first. And so this sorts it by that second column, and then I hide this. Pretend it doesn't exist. Okay. And now this is just what you see is our names ranked by who's currently on top. Um, I have the highest one green, the next highest orange. I did that before I had it s sort the, the, the names automatically. Um, this is the way I did that now. Large is the easy way to grab the nth most, the nth highest <laughs> um, value. So conditional. 
and you can see that here as well. I could have simply, well, I don't actually know if I could make one of these colored a particular way in it like that. That's an interesting question. I'm going to test that real fast. Um, delete rule, delete the rule. I don't technically need those anymore because it is sorted before that was so that you could easily pick out whose was highest even though it wasn't ordered in that way. Um, Okay, and if I were, let's see, I guess I would take this one and make it be a big number, 999999. Yep, that works fine. So now I know that's a thing. Um, okay, and you know that large is a thing now. Uh, and so before what I did for the leads, Uh, well, I could have used large for the leads before. Now I just have it compute the lead that this number is on this. So it's b2 over b3 minus 1, b3 over b4 minus 1, and so on. And one nice feature about this is that uh, when the leads are given in this way, they are roughly additive, which means... Uh, with me being 50% ahead of Ashara and Ashara being 5% ahead of Eric, I am about 55% ahead of Eric. Um, and there's a nice math um, thing I could go over for that. I've figured out exactly under what conditions that is true. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's our leaderboard um, and how it works. And one nice thing about this is I can, like what I did on the mini metro one, is I protected the first sheet so that only I could edit it. And then um, each of the other sheets is protected so that only the person who it refers to can edit it. Um, and so that's, that's how that works, which is a really nice feature to help share this with a bunch of people but keep it controlled. So that way, like, they don't mess up anything in a catastrophic way. Um, and additionally, it allows some variance. I didn't bother doing that with this one because I kind of trust all the users. I just protected the first sheet and not so that way they don't accidentally edit it. Um, but like on mine, I can add a bunch of personal data. So for instance, I also started tracking my B type scores just because I'm using them for training values. Um, and over here, I made a nice graph, uh, a chart of scatter plotting all of these scores versus whatever level I started at. And I'm actually recording not just record breaks on the whole, but my record break per record breaks per starting level. So anytime so the so for instance, here I recorded this score because it was better than this score because in it was better than the last high score I had for level starting at level 8. Um, and today I got 181k uh, on level starting at level 8 so that was another like almost got there. Um, and I like having this be more rounded off so I can sort of see where my what at my best starting level seems to be right now. Well, though I haven't played level six in a long time. I'm curious what that would be. Okay. Um, so that's how this works. Oh, and I added my own conditional formatting here so I could see at a glance which of these corresponded to which of these. Um, that one is just a color scale. So if you go to the color scale tab um, and apply it to a range, you just choose the default format that you like, like which direction you want it to go. 
and I wanted to go this direction, and so when I was done, it's like two clicks and you're there. Um, and that formats the smallest value as white and the largest value as darkest. And you can actually tweak that so that like the small, the widest one would be zero if it existed, and things like that. Um, it's really helpful. Conditional formatting is amazing. Um, but yeah, that is Tetris High Scores and its history. D is relative. No. Yes, two. Both can be relative. 